Today's question is, are Fox Shocks truly actually worth the hype and worth the money, worth your investment? Today, we will find out. So we are going to end up installing them on our 2020 high cut on our 2020 High Country Denali. Oh my God, I'm getting these 2020s mixed up. On our 2020 Sierra Denali, there we go. And replacing them with the Rancho shocks that I've been running for the last 10,000 miles. Now this actually worked out really well because I'm genuinely curious to see if the Fox shocks make a noticeable difference in overall ride quality and the front end of that truck. Now, in today's video, we're actually only going to be installing the Fox front shocks because I actually don't have the rear shocks for that truck yet. Long story short, we had ordered in front shocks for this Thing, and when they arrived, they actually were the black canister reservoirs. And we installed them thinking that our rear shocks, which were coming in like three days later, were gonna be black, but they were not. They were silver. So what we had to do was order silver ones for the front. So now these match perfectly because we couldn't have not matching shocks. And then we had those left over and I couldn't return them because I actually threw out the boxes. The boxes that they're sitting in right now are the rear shock boxes for those shocks right there for protection. We have another 2020 that they'll fit on, so it kind of worked out perfectly. But real quick, guys, before we move the Jeep over here to get the 2020 High Country out, to get the 2020 Denali in, 10 times entries for doors off giveaway number one and tonight, the 16th. So if you wanna grab 10 times entries for a chance to take our 2019 JLU home and $10,000, now is your chance. And guys, just real quick, I'm super excited to announce that Dream Diesel giveaway number 11 is going live on June 18th. You guys are not gonna wanna miss it. I am super excited to give you more information, but we can't do that in today's video. Oh, I gotta get the keys, that'll help. Full turn radius, boys. 24 by 14's leveled. Now, initially when I was thinking through this video, I was gonna take the High Country and do a comparison with the Denali because they're both equipped with Magoy's upper control arms and leveling keys, but the issue here is this. This truck is on a Fury 33 14 and a half, which is actually a slightly shorter tire than the Nitto 355 that's on this truck. So in turn, this truck's keys are actually cranked up a little bit more, meaning that the control arm is down a little bit more, inherently making this truck ride rougher than that truck. This truck actually rides considerably better than that truck due to that single reason. So it wouldn't really be a one to one comparison. So rather, we're gonna just take this truck, we're gonna go out for a drive, I'm gonna explain kind of the haptics of that Rancho shock. Spoiler alert, it's not that good. Then we're gonna talk about the shock side by side, install the Fox on the front because we're still waiting on the back and then go out for a drive to get final takeaways. I'm gonna kind of just lead on to say right now, that High Country rides amazing. It literally rides better than any other truck I've ever owned ever. And I've had a few in my experience, so take it for what it is from me. But I would say that that is the best riding truck, no questions asked, that I've ever owned. And a big culprit to that is independent front suspension, but also how you configure everything else in there. So I've run the Magoy's upper control arms with the keys now for about 10,000 miles, and it has been a fantastic addition to the truck because I've been able to clear a 2214 negative 73 offset wheel with a 355 40 22 tire. This tire sits about 34 inches tall and a true 14 inches wide. These 2020s are very, very impressive in terms of what you can clear with very minimal lift. Now, the Magoy's upper control arm kit comes with the actual upper control arm, the ball joint, the keys, and then it comes with spacers that actually go on to the upper shock bolts. They're about an inch tall, and basically what it allows is extra travel room for that shock, because technically that Rancho, if not with the spacers, would bottom out in its rebound phase. So I think one of the biggest changes that we're gonna see with the addition of that Fox shock is it's actually designed for a leveled truck. Rather than using those spacers, it just has a longer piston and in turn more travel so it can cycle its compression and rebound more organically 
rather than kind of just putting spacers on the top. Now, as I had mentioned, this thing has been completely fine for me. So it's not like I'm gonna discount the fact that if you decide to go level before shocks, because it can get a little expensive, that will work. This is more just an informative video to try and figure out side-by-side -side comparison of whether or not we can just notice the difference behind the wheel. So that being said, let's go out for a quick drive. I kind of want to explain what I feel before we change these things over. All right, guys, so we're on a nice little back road here. I like this road because it hasn't been upkept for years, and it gives us a good ability to really feel what's in the road. And I'll tell you what, with the way that I've got the keys cranked in the front, which is not, mind you, all the way down, there's still some gap between the upper control arm and the actual rest on the frame. It is definitely bouncy. It almost seems like the suspension doesn't have its full length of travel that it requires. Now, dating back to my motocross days, I used to race motocross for about 10 years. It all brings back familiar suspension and rebound calibrations settings that I used to make when I adjusted my suspension for my weight back in the day. Any motocross racers out in the audience, you guys know exactly how important that is. And what I think we're running into here on the factory shocks is that there's plenty of compression, but not enough rebound to offset that downward travel of the actual suspension, lower control arm, and all that good stuff. And I genuinely think that that's where you're going to run into some, I'm going to call them comfort quality issues when you're actually behind the wheel, because it's going to feel like your suspension truly is limited. Well, because it is, because it's attached to a shock that truly doesn't have enough travel to make up for the other adjustments that you made. Now, when we're talking just driving on a nice smooth road like we are right now, you really can't notice that much of a difference until you kind of get on like some floating bumps. You almost feel like the front end is like jumping back up to where it needs to be way quicker than just traveling through the motion. So satisfying when you get them lined up for the first time. It's a miracle too. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> uh, I don't feel bad touching these wheels because they're so clean right now. Right. This is Sparta! A lot of pressure on these things right now. That's crazy, there's still about a half an inch of clearance between that spacer and the shock now that it's actually fully rebounded. Meaning that these ranchos, for what I have this truck set up at, don't have enough travel. Hey Caleb, we're gonna do that. Bing, 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 bing. So let's talk about them, guys. So here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison of our Fox shocks with external reservoirs versus the Ranchos that come factory on the Denali and the High Country trucks or the Z71s, whatever trim level you want. These Ranchos are technically an upgrade from the factory. Yes, they are. And I think you guys are gonna be really shocked about what we're about to show you because these look like junk compared to these with the tests that we're about to perform before we get these things back installed and then go back out on a ride to get our true real life scenario driving differences. Now, in today's test, we don't have a digital pressure gauge, but we have Jake. So, Jake. Ugh. Yo, no hemorrhoids here, dude. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, damn it, dude, I did it again. <laughs> All right, guys, so what we're gonna do real quick is we are going to compress these all the way down as far as they can go, and we are going to time how quickly it takes for them to rebound back to their fully expanded State. Thank you. Thank you. I was just like, dead that words. <laughs> I'm like, pick up where I left off. Let's go. All right. And ready, set, go. Where are we at? 18 seconds. About 18 seconds. And it also made a lot of really peculiar liquidy noises, noises <laughs> as it was working its way back out. Mind you, these shocks have 14,000 miles on them from the factory. Should we do the same thing with this other one just to see if it's not just that shock? Yep. All right, we're gonna do, that was our first one. So push it all the way down, then I'll hit start. Is that one a little harder? Yeah. <laughs> all right, start. Dang, must that have, is really bad. Must have broke that one in. <laughs> is it even gonna get back out? <laughs> <laughs> it stays permanently. Wow. Dang. 
15 seconds longer than that one. So where did we stop here? About 53, 54? Yeah. So 15 seconds longer. That one was, what was our total? The first one was 17 seconds, minus 56. I'm gonna have to get the calculator out on that one. 39 seconds. Wow. 39 seconds, 17 seconds. And now we're gonna do a comparison to our Fox shocks. And just to keep our sampling size consistent, we're gonna do it the exact same thing. Now, mind you, Jake's gonna have to work a lot harder to compress these. Now, and granted, they are brand new, but I still feel as if the standings would still be very similar, even if they had a few thousand miles on them. All right, let's go here. All right, you want to compress it and I'll hit start on the test. Here we go. Seven seconds. Sweet. Seven seconds on our first one. Reset. And go. Pretty consistent. So one of them is 10 seconds faster and then the other one is- Exponentially faster. <laughs> 29 seconds faster yeah, yep. than our factory ones. That is absolutely absurd. Is it way easier to push those down than it is those down? Those feel like you're pushing down like water. Those feel like you're pushing down like concrete. It's, it's that It's that significant. It's yeah, you had. it looks like you had to work a lot harder to compress those yeah, than those. These I can just push down. These I had to like hook my foot and like, put my whole body in. <laughs> now, real quick, a few other observations that I had noticed when I was actually taking these off is when I was loosening the top bolts, the shock actually wasn't completely down. I had had to twist a good amount of the thread off of the bolt, which actually exposed about another half of an inch of bolt before this shock was loose on the top hat mounting location, meaning that when this shock was installed and tightened fixed from the top and the bottom, it was actually not fully expanded. So all of the weight of the entire front end, upper, lower, torsion bars, sway bars, all that good stuff was actually being held up while in free float just by the shock. Now I'm no expert, but I don't think that's good. And then also real quick, these are the spacers that are provided by McGoys. Like I said, probably a good temporary solution, but even if you talk to them, they would advise getting a proper shock for the height that you're looking to achieve. And on this truck, we're at about two and a half inch level up front, a little bit actually taller than in the rear just to get those tires to fit full turn. And then side by side on these shocks, you can see these are tailored for a two to three inch lift, meaning like basically a level. And you can see that difference here by how much longer the actual cylinder is. Now also real quick, fun fact for you guys, I actually wasn't aware of this before, so I figured I would pass it along as I learned some things. These reservoirs are used to collect the gas that is inside the shock as well as the oil under a state at which this cylinder is fully compressed. So they are actually more or less off-road shocks. You're never actually going to fully compress the shock on road. I mean, unless like you're like jumping your truck or whatever, do whatever you want, it's your truck. I'm not saying that you can't, but that's what those are truly for. Whereas a shock like this, all that gas and oil just gets compressed at the top of the cylinder. So it actually can't get fully compressed unless it's completely clapped out like these ratios. So let's get these things back installed and back out on the road. Cause I am so excited to find out whether or not this thing feels noticeably different from that seat right there. Dude, you picked the hard side to do. Thanks for that. <laughs> Pass me that uh, crowbar. Thank you. Shocks back in and not to mention, they look fantastic. I like them a lot. Really kind of go with everything that we got going on here. Now, the big question in the room is, will the shocks make a difference? I'm actually super excited to find out. I do think they will, purely off of the travel issue that we identified and talked about a little bit earlier. To my favorite road for the true test. Let's get through it here, see how it handles some of the uneven, unevenness in the road, some of the little dips and divots, cruising through. Man, I couldn't ask for a better test road if I tried. All right, so we are back on that straightaway road where we were last time with the stock shocks. It's almost like the factory shock was trying to stretch when it had a Charlie horse. If anyone's ever had a Charlie horse, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. You basically become immobile. That is the best way that I can explain the difference and from 
that small little drive that we just took, huge difference. I mean, massive, massive difference compared to the stock shocks because I would say that the sole contributor is, well, A, the timeliness of the rebound. You guys saw that it only took about six to seven seconds on each shock to actually get out to its fully extended state, but also because it actually has the length that it needs to fully travel throughout its suspension cycle. That was a hell of a rub. There's zero ifs, ands, or buts on whether or not investing in shocks while you're doing a two and a half inch level is worth it. Dude, it is insane. Insane. For real, like insane in the membrane insane or just? Like that. Oh. Wow. Like, dude, totally different. I cannot even begin to express how much more desirable the ride quality is now versus before. And part of the real reason that this whole video idea even started is because this is the first truck I've ever driven with leveling arms, keys, and aftermarket shocks. And when I rode it for the first time, I was with my film team and they were like, Jack, what's wrong with you? Because I had this like shocking face reaction and they're like, are you good? And like, is everything okay with the truck? And I'm like, yes, it's just insane how much better it rides. Get it, shocking face. <laughs> Yo, that was a good one, dude. I like, I like what you're doing there. That wasn't even planned. I see you though. I see you. I'm a giant brain, I think. I don't know. What was that word? What word? Giant brain? I don't think you said giant. Caleb, did he say giant? Did he say? LeBron giant. What did I say? Play it over. In the giant brain. Oh, that's what I said. Ah. Yeah. Yo, what the? Nice. <laughs> Still works. Imagine that. So I'm thinking this right here is the perfect thumbnail. What do, what do you guys say? Drop a comment below. So thank you, High Country, for inspiring this build on pure accident. I really appreciate you looking out for the best interest of the 2020 group. Now, that being said, we are under the task of trying to find the new Black Reservoir Fox style performance shocks for the rear, which has been quite a daunting task. We haven't had any luck. I'm thinking and chalking it up to the fact that there was a small mislabeling or packaging issue with these. I got lucky, was able to make a video for all of you about this topic which i think we have an answer on and hopefully get back shock soon because i'm probably not going to get any until i can actually get ones that match i think that's the sensible thing to do right so yes as a key takeaway it makes a massive difference and if you're considering a two and a half inch leveling kit do the shocks save up to do the entire purchase at one time because you're in there and you might as well knock it all out in one foul swoop so with that being said that's where we're going to end this video thank you guys so much for staying tuned i hope you guys learned something i had a lot of fun as always we've got to get back to work in the shop we've got a big week coming up for dream diesel giveaway number 11 yes number 11 is launching this june 18th 1201 a.m eastern standard time and i cannot wait to debut what's in store that being said my likely all you guys do your best tap that subscribe button on your way out and i'll see y'all in the next show, one